Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to go ahead and take a look at creating this cool sound wave slash smooth fiery abstract artwork graphic. Uh, it's a very very cool effect, something that literally the sky is the limit. You can color it anything you want. You can go in and add all kinds of different effects and cool things to it. We're going to take a moment, learn how to create it. It's super easy to do, not nearly as difficult as maybe it looks. And in the process of learning to create this, we're actually going to learn how to create several different effects because we sort of need to build a couple different effects to get to this effect. But they're all super easy to do. So just follow along and we'll be creating a fire effect um, just like this one. Uh, actually, hopefully a little bit nicer than this one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this. And you can follow right along with me. We're going to start with a blank Photoshop document. Uh, there's not really anything needed except Photoshop. So we're going to go File, New, and I'm going to set my width to 1280, my height to 720, resolution 72. I suggest you use it this same size, at least for creating the graphics here with me, just because we are going to be using the brush tool, so you'll be able to use the exact size and everything that I'm using. So go ahead and hit OK. And we need to first off go ahead and darken up our background. We need to be working on a very dark background so we get this, this very contrasty. We want our color really to pop and jump off this dark background. So what I'm going to do is select my foreground color as I just did. And I'm going to choose the hexadecimal code input area right here, this FFFFFF. And I want to punch in the color. I know the number for it. It is 170626. And it's a very, very dark blue or purple. And it's, it's probably closer to a purple. But it's very, very dark. And that's what I like about it. So I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to hit Alt Backspace, Alt Backspace on the PC, the Option uh, Return on the Mac, I believe, for you guys. And there we go, we have a BAM, nice dark background, I love it. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a new layer. And this new layer is just simply going to be, for reference, a guide. I'm going to go ahead and grab like a 3 pixel brush here. And I'm going to reset my foreground and background color by hitting the letter D. So BAM, back to black and white. I'm going to hit X to flip my foreground and background colors. I am now painting with white. I'm going to paint in just like a little mountain looking effect here. It's just strictly for a guide. There's no other purpose for this. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to paint something like this. This is just for me to follow along with when I start painting my effect. So what I have, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to be too terribly picky about it. I might even reduce the opacity to kind of just let it hang out back there. And I'm going to name the layer guide. As soon as we paint our effect, we're going to throw this thing in the garbage. We don't we don't want it. We're sick of looking at it. We can't stand it. All right, I'm going to create a new layer here and I'm going to name this bubble. And you'll see why I'm naming it bubble in just a second. We're going to build a, an effect that looks like bubbles sort of percolating up from the base of the Photoshop document. It's going to sort of be the base of our fire, our flame effect. And this is sort of the first effect that you're going to learn how to how to create here. And you could stop after we do this and you'll have a kind of a cool effect. But just Hang with me here. We're going to go into the brushes panel and, uh, well, I'm going to hit the little drop down menu here. Actually, let's just go into the brushes panel. What the heck? That way we're all on the same page here. And I'm just going to choose the 28 pixel, that looks about right, 28 pixel hard edged standard solid brush, just like that. And I'm going to check on shape dynamics. And I'm just going to drag, well, it's already up, size jitter all the way up to 100%. Lovely. My controls on pen pressure. You can set pen pressure or off. Uh, either or should work. I'm using a tablet, so I'd rather have the pen pressure option going for me. And then I'm going to tick on scattering, select scattering. And I want to scatter along both axes at 1,000%. We want this stuff to be as blown apart as possible. Great. Control off. I'm going to let Photoshop sort of randomize it, if you will, for me. And the count, you want your count reduced to zero. Or excuse me, one. You can't go to zero. Uh, so one, we want this to be nice and spaced out. Again, we're going for space, 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 space. And we're going to go brush tip shape because this still isn't spaced out enough. And we're going to increase the spacing up to about 125% or so. I'm at 133, whatever. That looks fine. All right, I'm going to move my brushes panel out of here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by painting the this bigger bubble size. All right, so this is sort of the base of our effect. Notice I'm just trying to stay within the confines of that mountain shape I drew. All right, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the size of my brush. I'm going to drag it down to about 15 or 16 or 16 right there. There we go. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add and start working my way up sort of my little shape. Again, it's just a very, very rough little effect. And then I'm going to down my size to about 8, you know, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything exact. And then I'm going to sort of taper off as I get up to the top. I want the bubbles to be bigger down here and then just very gentle and percolating up to sort of nothingness. So start low and then just pull it straight up. Pull it straight up. It helps to have a tablet for this kind of thing. But if you don't have a tablet, don't be too worried. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to up the side about 25 or 32 or something in that 
range. And I'm just going to spread out the base of this effect a little bit. I really want the base to be wider than sort of all of my mountain peaks that I've built in here, just because it's going to affect the overall shape of my my bubbly effect. And then to add a little bit of depth to this, well, we don't really need to add depth, but eh, now that I mention it, we will. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to throw a couple larger bubbles on this. So I'm going to up my size to about 50. And I'm just going to throw a couple larger bubbles across the front. And the way we'll make this look like it's got a different depth than these other bubbles is just blur it slightly. So we're going to filter blur, Gaussian blur, and 58 is way, way too much. We're going to blur it about, I don't know, let's say 5 or 6. Something like that. That's cool. Whatever. Just adds a little bit of depth. Kind of a neat little effect there. Very, very cool. So this is bubble blurred. But we can actually just merge these two layers by selecting them both. I just select one, hold down my shift key, select the other. Command or control E. Bam. Merged. Just like that. All of our bubbles are in one. Now that we've sort of painted our, our effect, we can get rid of this guide layer. That's just taking up space, hanging out there. We don't want it. There we go. That's our initial effect. Cool, doesn't look like very much. We're not gonna be too worried about it. I actually wanna rename my bubble layer to just bubble because I'm a perfectionist. And now what we wanna do is we wanna duplicate this layer three times. Well, duplicate it twice. We're gonna have three layers in total. So just Command or Control J once, Command or Control J twice. So we've got bubble, bubble copy, and bubble copy two. Now, we can shut off the two top bubble layers for now. And I just wanna focus on this one bubble layer here. I'm going to select this and I'm just gonna set this layer to overlay. It's going to sort of just give me this very subtle dark blue effect, the, the white interacting with that dark blue background. Great. We're going to go to the second bubble layer. And this one, we want to blur. And we want to add some color. This is where we're going to introduce color to our effect. So we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And really, the thing that I'm going to watch most are the small bubbles here. I want to make sure that I don't blur it so much that those little tiny bubbles up at the top completely disappear. So I'm going to back this off a little bit. Let's go with about three, something like that. That's actually pretty cool. Eh, maybe a little more. Let's go with four. Yeah, four is good. I like four. So let's hit OK. And now I want to increase the impact or the weight of this blurred layer. Because when you blur a layer, you, you sort of lose some of the opacity of that layer. So I'm just going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate that. And you can see it got much brighter. And I'm just going to merge these two layers. So I'm going to merge down by hitting Command or Control E. Boom. There we go. We've got our entire blurred layer merged together as one giant big solid layer. And we're going to add some color now. So I'm going to hit Command or Control U to bring up the hue saturation dialog. And what we need to do is tick on colorize right off the bat. And we don't see much because we're working with white. So really the first thing we need to do is decrease the lightness. Let's bring this guy back. And you can see as we come down in lightness, look at that, we're starting to see some color. Problem is the saturation is still far too low. So let's bring that guy way up. And hey, look at that. Kind of a nice pinkish red that's kind of a cool color. What I'm going for is almost a muted orangey gold tone. And I'm doing that because I'm actually going to introduce sort of a pinkish reddish color later. I actually want this to be a little more saturated. And I'm always a sucker for a good orangey yellow. I'm going to increase the brightness a little bit or the lightness here. Just so it's a slightly washed out orangey color. Okay, cool. I love it. And let's leave that like that. Let's actually set it to overlay and just see what it looks like. Yeah, not, not, I kind of figured it'd be something like that. Uh, so oh, let's go back to normal. And there we go. Now, we have this bubble layer on top. And you can see sort of our orange glows coming out around our non-blurred bubble layer. And I'm just going to set this guy to overlay. And it's going to really take on the color of the colorized layer beneath it. Great. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to select all three of these layers, hold or nah, let's just grab them all, drag them to the new layer button, and it's going to duplicate them all. Wonderful. So now we've got the effect sort of doubled up. See, there it is before. There it is after. Very cool. This is kind of a neat effect. We would take some time and tweak it further if we were just leaving the effect like this. But you're going to see in a moment, basically what we're going to do, we're going to grab all these guys, and we're just going to mash them into a layer group. So select them all, and you select them all by selecting the top or the bottom layer. Hold down your Shift key and select the, the opposite end layer. So from selecting bottom, shift and hit the top one. And then hit Command or Control G. Boom, got them grouped into a layer. And then we're going to right click. You don't want to right click on the name of the group. You get a different, uh, uh, no, I take that back. You don't. You can just right click on the name of the group and hit Merge Group. And you're going to see there's a little bit of a change because our overlay layers kind of revert a little bit back to normal. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but really, it's not going to be detrimental at all to our final effect. It's going to still look awesome. What we want to do at this point 
is scroll this down and begin blurring it. Begin really getting that effect. So I'm going to hit Command or Control T. All of our bubbles are now just in one big layer. And I'm going to hold down my Shift and Alt key. Maybe Shift and Option on the Mac. I'm going to scroll this guy down until it's about, oh, about that size. That's good. Enter key to commit those changes. And then we're going to go Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Now, here's the important thing. In Motion Blur, the the first result you he, you see here is a little bit deceiving. This isn't quite what it's going to look like in the end. It looks a little fibrous now, kind of actually like the fiber filter in Photoshop. We uh, we don't like that so much. We want it to be much smoother than that. So we're going to settle for this for now. Um, and you can see here, uh, whatever, 175, 180, something like that should be good. You don't want it to start being too stretched out because you can see the center of the graphic starts to pull away from it, uh, will pull apart. We don't want that. We want the graphic to still look pretty intact. And as soon as it starts looking like it's getting ready to pull apart, right there is where we'll stop. So for me, that's about 200 pixels. I got 198. And the angle is 90, just straight up and down. Hit OK. And then you just want to apply that same effect right, right on top of that, just again. So we're going to move motion blur again. And you can see how much it smooths this entire thing out. It really makes it silky smooth. So we're just going to hit OK. Wonderful. Great. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want. Now, we need to duplicate this guy three times. So Commander Control J. Uh, excuse me, yeah, Commander Control J, Commander Control J, Commander Control J. We got four of them there. I'm going to shut off the two top layers and we're just going to work with the first one. So just doubling up the effect, it's already making a much more pronounced effect. But I want to really boost the contrast and the color and the brightness, so I'm going to set this to a blend mode of overlay. You can see we're increasing the contrast to the uh, graphic. I want to darken it up a bit, so I'm going to turn on the next layer and I'm going to set that to multiply. And it's really going to darken those edges and, and just give us, a, again, a little bit more contrast. I might reduce the opacity on that a little bit. Set the opacity to around 65. And let's turn on the last layer. And we're going to set this guy to overlay again. So you can see, if I shut off my three duplicated layers, that was right after we blurred it. We add one overlay layer. We add, whoop, oh, little glitch. <laughs> we add one overlay layer. Then we add our multiply layer, all adding contrast. And we add our last overlay layer. And we have this really, really cool effect. Now, if you want at this point to go in and change colors, there are a number of things you can do. For instance, I, I actually want to add a little bit more orange to this. So what I can do is go in with a paintbrush and physically paint the color in, and I'll show you how I do that. But I'm going to show you, because all I want to do is add sort of a pink edge around this to give it just a, an, added, an added electrical pop look. It'll just be kind of cool. So we're going to add a new layer, and we're just going to call this edge color. Voila, like so. And with my brush tool, I actually let's open up our brushes panel here. And we just want to make sure that we're not dealing with all the scattering and stuff. You can either go in and manually uncheck everything or just select a new brush preset. So let's go with here. Okay, never mind. I stand corrected. Hit brush out here. And there we go. So you need to go to your, your brush brief, uh, presets panel, not just your size uh, changer, if you will. So I'm going to go with, uh, actually, I need to be much larger. Let's go with about 120. 5 or 130 or 200 actually probably yeah 200 is good and I want this to have a very soft edge so hardness zero very blurred on the edges there for our brush I'm gonna close my brushes panel and I want to go and choose the color I'm painting with and I want to go for a very hot pink slash red it's 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 really a hot, just a very rich hot pink so right about that color is cool I love it. Now, in order to sort of stay within our graphic, I'm going to control click one of my graphic layers. And you can see it's a very small selection that's going to come up, but have no fear. Uh, it, it has selected out here where you can't see the selection. It's just when the opacity is less than, I believe it's 50%, those selection edges, the marching ants, are not visible. So as we paint, you're going to start seeing your pink or your whatever color, the color of your choice, coming in and affecting your graphic. There we go. Very cool. Now, Commander Control D to deselect. That doesn't quite look as natural as I want it to, so I'm actually going to blur it just a little bit. So I'm going to go blur, Gaussian blur, and maybe like 20 or 30, something like that. There we go. It looks good. About 30. Hit OK. And I'm going to set this to soft light. So it's going to give me a nice eh, soft light, maybe a little too soft. Let's go with overlay. Very cool. And now, if that's not enough color for you, all you need to do is duplicate this layer, Commander Control J. And maybe again, Commander Control J. Eh, that's a little bit too much. I'll delete that. Or you could just reduce the opacity. There we go, very cool. So we have our first initial graphic here. And actually, I want to add a little bit of orange to the center. So I'm going to use the same method just without creating a selection. I'm just going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this Center Colorize. And this is all just tweaking, whatever. You don't really have to do it if you don't want. I'm going to downsize my brush. I'm using the bracket keys next to the letter P on your keyboard. And what I want to do is basically add just a, a kiss of orange 
more of a rich orange, actually, a true orange, if you will, to the darker areas, not the highlight sections of this graphic. So I'm just going to go in, and all this is going to be blurred. So I'm just going to add one there. I'm going to add one there, maybe a little bit more there, a little on that side, a little bit there, touch in there, and a little bit along the outside there. And now with this, we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur it up. That's a little bit too much blur for me. I just want it to sort of be non-distinguishable anymore. Let's go with about 20, hit OK. And then we're going to set this guy to overlay. Let's see what we get. Ooh, overlay is a little bit too strong. Let's just go soft light, soft light's cool. And I'm actually going to throw a mask on this. And I'm just going to paint away. There are a couple edges that are quite hard. So I'll hit X to make black my foreground color. You can see there are a couple areas in there where we probably just wouldn't want that orange to be showing up. Wow, there's a nice effect to have throughout the body of the graphic. We don't want it you know, everywhere. So there we go. Great. We have our first graphic. And basically all we need to do at this point is just group it up. Group by selecting it all, Command or Control G. And we're going to just call it Fire Art. And there we go. Well, if I can spell fire. There we go. Now, we're going to just take this and create a neat little graphic with it. So I'm actually going to shut it off, and we're going to create a, just a letterpress line going across the screen. Create a new layer. And we're going to grab the single row marquee tool. It's a single row, not the single column. So it makes a horizontal line. And just going to click once. And we want to reset our foreground and background color. So D to get it back to black and white. X to make white the foreground color. And then Alt Backspace Option Delete to fill that with white. And you can't see anything. So Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see, there we go. We've got a nice white line. Very, very cool. And we're going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. So now we have two one pixel lines stacked right on top of one another. What I'm going to do, typically with a letterpress effect, the you, you envision the light coming down from above, which means that your highlight is on the bottom. So we want the white line to be on the bottom, the black line to be on top. So I'm going to grab my Move tool, and I'm just going to use my up arrow key and just bump this line up once. You can see, up oh, there's a space between the lines. We want those lines pressed right up against each other. And then I'm just going to invert the colors of this layer. It's white. I'm going to hit Command or Control I. It's going to make it black. So it makes it look like it's gone, but it's just because our background's so dark. I'm going to create a new layer here, and let's just fill this with a different color, maybe a green. And you can see we have a black line and a white line. Now, something to bear in mind is the white is going to show much, much more than the black. So we really want to maybe not make this white. We maybe want this to be gray. So I'm going to select the white layer. And this is white. And this guy is black. I'm going to select the white layer. And I'm going to open up my levels adjustment. So Command or Control L. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my white slider. I'm going to slide it back. It's going to make it more of a, a gray or a dark, gr darker gray. Excuse me. And hit OK. Now I'm going to zoom back out to 100%. Just kind of check to see what that looks like. And maybe I need it to be a little bit lighter than that, so I'm going to go back into Levels, and I'm going to increase the white. There we go. Something kind of like that should be cool. Hit OK. And then I'm just going to merge these two layers together by selecting them both, and then hitting Command or Control E. Boom. Got our lines together. Oh, what happened? Let me bring the white up top. And there we go. And then Command or Control E. There we go. So we've got our lines together, and still maybe the white's a little bit too strong. So in that case, I would again open up levels and just drag my white slider back just a little bit, just to darken any whites that might be there. There we go. Very cool. And I love it. Now, that's really just an optional thing. We're going to go grab the fire art now. And basically what we're going to do is, oh, I still have that uh, line effect selected. I'm going to grab my fire art layer, and I'm going to drag it up. I'm actually going to flip it completely around. I'm going to hit Command or Control T. When you have a layer group selected, it's going to highlight everything in the group for you. And I'm just going to right click and hit flip vertical. Boom. So now we sort of have our fire spikes driving straight down toward the bottom. Hit enter return to commit that change. And I want to mask this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a selection with my rectangular marquee tool. And I actually want to zoom in. Because what I want to do is I want to mask this off at this line. So I'm going to start at the line like so. And well, you know what, actually? Here's how I'd normally do it. Make a rough selection first, and then zoom way in on the line. And you can see we're about three pixels above it. So what we're going to do is grab the single row marquee tool, hold down the Alt or Option key, which is going to subtract from your selection, and just bam, knock off one row, knock off the second row, knock off the third row. We have the exact selection we need, just like so. And then we're just going to, with the layer group selected, we're going to hit the Mask button, and it's going to mask right to that group. Lovely. 
Now what we want to do is duplicate this group. So hold or just select the group and drag it down to the new layer icon. Boom, we've duplicated it. It's intensified quite a bit. But now we're going to just get rid of this layer mask. So drag it to the garbage. And it's going to basically say, hey, look, we're going to delete the layer mask. Yep, we're deleting it. Get rid of it. And we're going to hit Commander Control T and right click, flip that guy vertical. And we're going to downsize this a decent amount. And we're going to make some fire spiking under the top of this, like so. There we go. And now at this point, you can just go ahead and do the same exact thing. Grab the rectangular marquee tool and mask it off to the line, kind of like we did a moment ago. And I'm not being too particular there, but there we go. And at this point, the one last thing you might want to do is grab one more layer and just add a kiss of pink or orange to the center. So we're just going to say final color tweak. And I'm going to grab my brush tool and... Go ahead, let's go with that kind of same edge pink that we have, something like that. Again, not being too terribly picky. And just select once in the middle, just like that, and set this guy to, let's try soft light. So that might be a little bit too intense, which means overlay is going to be way too intense. Let's stick with soft light and just drop the opacity a little bit. There we go. So just, a, just something to kind of break up the monotony of just having yellow and orange going straight across, introduce a little bit of color. So there we go. We have created this very cool fire effect. It's super easy to do, super quick and easy. Uh, it can be incorporated as a web graphic or something into a presentation or whatever you're working on, uh, digital illustration. Uh, and that's it. Super easy to do. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Uh, check out the Facebook fan page as well as make sure you follow me on Twitter at Tutvid. I'll catch you guys later.